All right, so we're recording now. We have 14 people so far. This should be a very quick um, little lesson. Are any of you doing um, Boulevard with me? Yay, good job. Good job for the thumbs up. Yeah. That's a good way to do it since you're muted. That's very smart. <laughs> you guys are on it. I finished it. Oh, good oh. job, Joni. All right, so those of you that are doing um, Boulevard, are any of you using a five by seven hoop? Yes. Really? Yes. So it's funny, it didn't even occur to me that people would be using a five by seven hoop. I don't know why it should have, because it says right on the label, five by seven hoop. Um, and so somebody was asking me about how to do the quilting and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and at 3.30 this morning, I went, oh, this is how. <laughs> so I sent myself a message so I'd remember to be able to show you guys how to do it. All right, so there's a chat. I got to see what that is. Using larger hoop with quilting. All right, that's from Mary. Okay, so larger hoop definitely makes it easier, but if you have a smaller hoop, it is doable, and I was glad to find this out. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen so you can see. Um, you don't necessarily need um, embroidery software to do this, but it makes it easier for me to show you how, especially since I don't, I haven't figured out how, my embroidery machine's over there and I haven't figured out how to get you guys over there and to be able to see what I'm doing. So, so far we're just doing it on my computer. So, all right, are you, you can't see my screen, right? Now you should be able to, hopefully. All right, let's see. All right, did that work? Yep. Can you guys see my screen? Good. Yes. We're doing good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're doing good. Okay, so I use Sew It Pro. There's a bunch of different um, types of, let's close this. Later. All right. Um, so what is the bunch Sew It Pro is your software program? So what pro is the software I use? There's lots of different ones and you can use whatever works for you. Most of the information probably transfers over in some way or another, um, but this is the one I use. It's very user friendly. So I'm just going to open a file to show you, um, those of you that are using a five by seven hoop, that it, it really is very doable. So if you open up one of your Kimberbell designs, I keep mine on my desk. Up. All right, and then the Halloween ones. And a good one is this number two. So if you're going to do multi-hoopings, I recommend doing one that you don't have to line up just right. So um, if, you, if you did like the spider web or even the, the one that I'm gonna use on um, Boulevard today, it's got those swirly lines and then the witch. And you would kind of need to line that up. And that might be a little bit diff more difficult. So my recommendation would be to use one like this, that there's no lining up at all. Makes it very simple. Sorry, my phone keeps dinging. All right, um, so go ahead and open that. And then I'm gonna change to a five by seven sideways. Um, so if you go up here, this it looks like a hoop. And you've got lots of different hoop options, and I'm just going to use the one that's like the sideways five by seven. So this is the four by four file. You can see that it's larger, obviously, because of the main fabric tack down. We talked about that before. So I'm just going to quickly take those out just for simplicity, basically. So to do that, you just click on the thread, right click, and click delete thread. This is, again, using Sew Up Pro but it just shows you how very simple it is. So now we just have the stitching, the quilting, I should say. Can I ask one quick question first? Yeah, go for it, Erin. Um, is this a PC or a Mac? PC. Thank you. I am definitely a PC girl. I do not do anything on Mac. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get questions and I'm like, don't know, Google it. I'm sorry, I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna move this over just so that we can see. So right now we're just under four inches. And so take for instance, like the six by eight that we did yesterday. No, this is for um, Broomhilda, let me get that. 
this one. All right, so this one we did yesterday, Bella's Boutique, and it's a final cut size of six by eight, six and a half by eight and a half. So to do this, you would need to be able to do quilting all around, right? And if you have a five by seven hoop, that makes it a little bit more difficult. But as you can see on my screen, I've turned my hoop sideways and then the designs are, you, you could certainly flip it around. You would just use this green button here, but you wouldn't need to because they're, you know, kind of all over. So we have the four by four. So what I would do is merge another one, go to file merge. Hi, Jackie. Hi. <laughs> go to file merge and then use a two by four design. And you can see how cute that is and then move it over. And then just like I did on the other one, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. You wouldn't need to, or you can do that on your machine because you're not bigger than your hoop at this point. So you could, you could easily do this on your machine, but I like to do it in software. And then you can move it over to wherever you like. So since this one's right in the middle, you can see from these little center guides, we can make this one go in the middle. Move it over a bit. Actually, that's pretty good. So you can see that it's not overlapping and it's lined up. And if we click on both of them, we can see that our overall design is under six inches by under four inches. Perfect, right? You can also- I got a question for you. Go for it, Joni. Did you bring in a border print and put it with the whole block print? How did it get split? I brought, did you just come in? Sorry. So we started with a four by four. This one is a four by four design. Correct. And then we added in a two by four. Okay, so it comes that way. Yeah, so that's the great thing about Kimberbell. Those of us that have been doing quilting with me before Kimberbell came out with the designs, you know that I spent literally hours upon hours upon hours finding designs that would fit these blocks. And then I would end up most often having to resize them and change them and um, edit them and spend just crazy amounts of time. And here they're already done. So you can see this four by four works perfectly with the, the two by four. And so it, it's just so easy. And you can do it on any of the designs because all of them come in so many different sizes. So anyway, so now we have these two, and if you wanted, you could merge it. Um, I'm sorry, join, join threads. So when I did it, when I added one in, I went to file merge, in case I forgot to mention that, file merge, and that's what brought in the second design. But now we're gonna join the threads. So you can see that, you can see that the first one, this is that four by four, and this is the two by four and they're the same color thread. So if I go to join threads, it's gonna give me the option of joining all the adjacent threads of the same color. So I say, okay, and boom, I have one design that's going to go. So you could leave in your batting, you could do all of that, but I wanted to be able to move it over in a way that you can see it really easily, but you could definitely start with your batting and you could start with one full length batting or the pieces, whatever's gonna work for you. My recommendation would be a full one. So if you did it this way, then you could just put down your batting, do, put down your main fabric, tape it down, and then do your stitching. And then when it's all done, trim your batting around from the back side. And so you can see this is a six by four, less than six by four. You would obviously have to do it twice right? So we've got our six inches across and then four and we would do it again. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. All right. So totally doable, right? Thanks, Diane. I like the thumbs up. <laughs> that helps. All right. So you can definitely, if you have a smaller hoop, you can most definitely do this block and do your quilting in the hoop. And it's, it's easy, it's extremely easy. You would do two hoops, where, whereas we're gonna do one. And again, you can do this on your machine. You don't have to use software. It's easier in my opinion, software. But if you were to bring both of the designs over on your USB stick, you would just go to edit and remember how I've shown you to move the design over and all of that. I hope that the next Bella box that comes out that they add the embroidery designs to it. 
I don't know if they will or not. It's, I hope. So. Yeah, we can have our hopes. I, I have no idea. <laughs> I know that um, I know nothing about digitizing, like literally nothing. And so to me, it's a lot of work. I can imagine that it's a lot of work and their design team is working so hard in creating these files for us. So I, I can't imagine it would be included because it's so much extra work and then it's going to bring the price up. But I have no idea. I have no idea what um, Kimberbell's plans are in the future. But at this point, I'm just super excited. Yes, Barbara. You don't have any any audio. You got to unmute. <laughs> Can someone tell her how to unmute? I don't know how. Uh, oh, up on mine, it's up here. I don't know. Yeah, you have to unmute her. Oh, I. I believe so. You're the administrator. Uh, let me see. You, you can actually mute, unmute yourself if you um, take your mouse and hover over your picture. Um, I have a, I have a uh, mute option. Oh, you're right. Can you see, you probably can't see this on mine, but if I hover over my picture, there's a mute button here. So you should have an unmute button right there. Depending on what you're on, I'm on an iPad and I don't have that. I'm I'm on an iPad and I do have it. You right. do? Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh, there okay. she is. Barbara Can got it. All right. What's your question? Okay, your software, uh, so what pro, where did you get that? Who put that up? I think it's called SNS something or other, but just Google it. Google so what pro and it'll come right up. Okay. Sorry, I don't remember. I think it's like SNS something or other. It's like $60 lifetime, one time purchase. And it's so user friendly. I, I like it. This is my preferred. A lot of people have in brilliance and more power to them. You know, whatever works for you. Yeah. Yes, Carol. Um, when you use this um, strategy to fit, fit it, the quilting in the hoop, are you not doing the tack down lines and placement lines at all? So you can, you definitely could. The only thing is that they're going to be separated. So I don't think, so if you think about it, so we took them away just so that you, we could merge them over easily. But if you kept them there, the lines would be underneath. So it wouldn't be a problem at all. But my concern would be that you'd have a little gap between the two. So like from this one and this one, there would be two separate battings. I don't think I would do that just because you'd have a little valley in there. You probably uh, wouldn't need to do it if you taped it down and just went yeah. ahead and did the embroidery but, okay. yeah. or the quilting. My, if it were me, and I haven't stitched this out, but if it were me, I would um, put down my batting and then Put down my main fabric tape it down like you do and that or you know if you for those that have a six by ten hoop and it doesn't fit you know i tell you to just tape it down and then do your stitching and then after you unhoop it and it's all done turn it upside down and trim your um batting starting stitch line that's what i would do but i'm sure you could do another way too all right do we have any other questions not yet. We're doing good on time. All right. So that's really all I had for today is to show you that you, if you have a five by seven hoop, you definitely can. Um, do you guys like to do it on your machine over doing stuff like this on software? Have you tried, which ways have you tried? Give me some information. I do the it. software. I bring in, I have an embroidery machine or a quilting machine. And I have a lot of quilting designs, a long arm, and I convert those designs into a Pez and then embroidery them out. And Barbara, what were you going to say? Um, I was wondering, couldn't you put a, um, a tack down line around that or, or in the inside? So, um, because once you put your design on top of that, you know, your, uh, let's say, uh, one of the houses, is it just going to go on top of that? 
Oh, absolutely. Just exactly the same. So we do our quilting and then we do our applique on top. Yes. Okay, so the applique would have a tack down line, wouldn't it? Yes, on these, not on all of them. So no. these have, ha, have been having them. So that's a good point. Although then you're gonna have it right in the middle of your project and you wouldn't build it. It'd be harder to get it up. I don't think I would could, do it that way, but. Could you say, after you've made this conversion here, could you save that as a file? Oh, absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that. So that is for sure. If you have a five by seven hoop, anytime that you change a file, you always want to go to file, save as, and give it a new name. And you can tell right up here at the top, it'll tell you what uh, file that you're working on. You never want to save over your existing file or that one's gone. You right. can download it again from Kimberbell, but still you would want to definitely do a file save as save yourself some time for next time. Carol, well, did you have something earlier? Okay. Um, I actually, I actually don't have embroidery software, have never been brave enough to purchase it. And I've been doing um, mine in just my edit function mm -hmm. in my, um, and it seems to be going okay. Great. Well, that works. That's definitely, um, it's really got to be whatever works for you, right? I mean, the people that are doing this one, so keep in mind that we have to move it down, right? And you can do that just as easily on your machine. I showed you on the very first video how to do that. Then the second one and today's I'll be doing on software just because it's faster, but uh, for me. So everybody's got what works for them. Sorry, Erin, what? I have a Mac and don't, there's not a lot of, so I haven't found the software that's compatible with the Mac. You have to get parallels and okay. then you, you can use the two operating systems. Ah. Oh. Well, I have, check, check online no. and see if SNS, if this So What Pro is Mac compatible. I don't know if it is or not. I've never we'll checked. Do. I know Embrilliance is Mac compatible. Yes, it is. That's true. I heard that in Brilliance, you have to buy a lot of different parts to it. You know, I, I just purchased uh, the first component from in Brilliance, and they've got like four or five models, so you can build as you go. Oh, perfect. And I got it in Brilliance because that's what works on the, a Mac, mm -hmm. and the others Good. don't. Yeah, I've, I had somebody message me the other day asking me about one that I've never even heard of, and I'm like, Oh, no, <laughs> I have my specific skill set, just like everyone else. So, <laughs> yeah, I can't answer everything. So, is that anyway. the only software you have? Mm -hmm. This is the only one. It it does everything I need. So I okay. haven't I haven't done anything else. So and and honestly, can I ask a question? Yep. How many people have a commercial um, quilting machine? I'm thinking about buying one. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, embroidery machine. I don't, I don't know. What do you, when you say commercial one, what do you mean? What is that? Well, mean? I've been looking at, you know, the, the 10 thread. Hmm. Does anybody on this group have one? A multi-needle? I don't know. You could put right. that question out to the group and, and get responses, I'm sure. I think I did. Um, you actually put it out on a comment on a different post, and so it. I know. I'm it sorry. I seen that. <laughs> That's okay. It just wasn't seen. So if you put it out on its own post, you'll get responses, and people will give you advice and such. I have about four different friends that use ten needles. Hmm. Okay. Do you know which one they use? Uh, I know three of them have Berninas. Okay. Can I ask a question? Of course. Um, I noticed that a lot of these designs are done on square hoops. However, I have a Bernina and it's oval and it's a real challenge. Oh, I bet. I don't know. Any, I, I have been using a larger hoop size, which lets me make the design bigger so I can fill in the areas I need, and that's the only way I know how to do it. What size is your biggest oval hoop? Six by 10. 
Mm, yeah, that's going to be hard. So Is that a MIDI or a maxi? That's the maxi. Yeah. Okay. Mm. One of the things, Kimber, one of the things Kimberbell suggested was to take out um, the placement lines for the fabric, and sometimes that would give you enough space to fit in with your hoop. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, so on the very first video for for both um, Boulevard and Broomhilda, I did mention that if you have a six by ten hoop and you do your quilting as the six by eight, it's not actually going to fit because of that number three and number four placement line and um, tack down line for your main fabric. That's what makes it six and a half. And it's very easy. I showed you how to take those out if you were here. Um, it's super easy to delete those threads and then you're all good. Then it's under six inches. So that should work for you, Joyce. I would hope. Yeah, I took your advice um, when I resized the design and the basting line went outside of the hoop, but that was okay with me. And so I just skipped that step and went straight to the design. Yeah, well, so if it's larger than your hoop, you shouldn't even be able to start it. You would have to delete that step for your hoop to recognize. Ah, uh, the Bernina will skip it. Oh, nice. That would that yeah. would be nice. Then you don't have to use software to take it out. Right. You could just skip I mean, it's it. It's not recommended, but it will skip it. Well, that's that's perfect. So that's easy. Then after your batting is down, you would just place your main fabric and tape it down, and you're all good to go. Really, it's saving a step. You don't have to take out those basting stitches. Right. Yeah, I got that idea from one of your earlier videos. Yeah, I did it yesterday too. On yesterday's video, I didn't, I didn't use the basting stitch. So save a little time because this one was so big. Did you guys do this one yet? The Bella's Boutique? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes, I yeah. did it. That one took forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> today's is not so bad. I haven't started it yet, but today's is not nearly as bad. But I think the Broomhilda one will be hard too. The bakery took a long time too. Yeah, that one I'm yeah. concerned about. Yeah. I'm curious to see if it's going to be bigger than Bella's Boutique because 60 steps, that was just so time consuming. My, my <laughs> phone, I took 130 photos for that video and my phone said, nope, can't hold anymore. <laughs> and I had deleted everything before I started. I was like, oh, gee. <laughs> so yeah. I didn't have, I understand a lot of people had a lot of problems with the, uh, the wording, embroidering the wording in the uh, bakery. The, uh, oh. You know, I didn't, I didn't have any problems, but I understand a lot of people did. Yeah, I was a little concerned about that. I saw those posts too. We haven't done that one yet, so so I'm hopeful that we don't have that problem. But I did see some posts about that. Yeah, I did not use the felt. You I don't did like not the use the felt. No. I used no. it and I didn't have any problem with it. Yeah, I don't, I didn't care for it. So I just used a uh, fabric. Well, it's your pillow. You get to do it however That's you right. want. That's <laughs> right. And I had I no had, problem. I had trouble with the B in bakery. Oh, it, you I, did. it kept breaking my thread, but I finally, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see me or not. But well, I can see you. Hold it up to your camera. Yeah. Okay. There you go, yeah. Yeah. So you had but, trouble with the B on that? Right, yeah. I just did it over. I It was the first part of it, and I just did it over, and it looks okay. It's so, it'll just blend in, yeah. Um, I was thinking about trying soluble um, copper on top of it first to see if that helps. I oh, use that. That's a good idea. I don't, did I unmute myself? <laughs> yes. Hi, Diane. I, I, used, I used Stitch H2O. And it worked, it worked really well. All right, that's a really good tip. So that makes sense. I mean, if you think about it, we use uh, water soluble on the top of anything thick and felt that would, that would make sense. So we'll have to remember that. And I didn't use it the first time and the felt got all, I don't know, all messy. So I figured this was a good way to keep it nice and clean and smooth. And then when I was finished, I can take it off. And is that a water soluble? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, good information. 
All right, our video is going to end in three minutes. Are there any other questions? I have a question. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I can hear this you, is, Carol. Okay. Um, this is your second video, is that correct? Yes. Now, where can I see your first one? Is it posted? So, somewhere? you know what? I tried to find it last night because I wanted to, to repost something about it, and I couldn't find it. I tried everything. <laughs> I don't know if it was taken down or if it just got convoluted in the group. I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. I tried searching by um, several different things that I remember that were in the thing. You know what? It probably, I bet you we can find it if we type in Welcome Autumn, now that I think about it, because it was when we were working on the Welcome Autumn uh, leafs and it was around September 16th to the 18th so I'll, I'll try and find it again and if I find it I can tag you in it okay that'd be great thanks so much yeah, yeah. no problem all right any other questions before we wrap up no, thank, you. thank you very much thank you girls thank you. it's so nice <laughs> to see you <laughs> I love that thank you all right thank see you, you later Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.